Because the whole concept of Gilgulim is because of the reality of Torah. Torah, the Gemara in Chagiga, the last daf says, in Chagiga, the one of the last lines of the Gemara there, that we learn out that the same way that the fire did not melt the copper of the Mizbeach, likewise the fire cannot, cannot do tikkun on a, a person who's a Tamachach, a person who learns Torah. In other words, the, the fires of Gehenim will not metakin a Tamachacham, because the Tamachacham cannot be affected by the fires of Gehenim. The Torah will protect them. Sounds like a good deal, right? The point is, is that the fires of Gehenim cannot rectify a person who has Torah behind it. So what does a person do? So therefore, Kresh Baruch Hu created the concept of Gilgulim in order to be able to, to allow a Tamachacham to rectify. If a, per, if, a, if a male, for example, did not have the schools to learn Torah in his entire lifetime, Lamaisa, he could go to Gehenna because there's no Torah to protect him. But anybody who has Torah learning would not be able to go to Gehenna and has to come back as a giggle instead. Women who have no chiv to learn Torah, therefore, even though they might learn Torah, the, it will not protect them from the fires of Gehenna, so they can go to Gehenna instead. So Gilgulim is not for women. It's primarily for men. The women who come back in every generation come back for different cheshbonos, but it's not because of tikkun, because they can do tikkun through Gehenna itself. So, you know, you teach that halacha, and you teach that idea, and I've taught this to women as well, you know, and you get, like, you know, people saying, wow, you know, what a, what a raw deal, you know, women go to Gehenna, men go to Gulen because we think life is such a fantastic thing, and coming back another time, another time, another time, basically, and, and going to Gehenna is nasty, you know, you know, who wants to go to Gehenna? So the Zohar says just the opposite. Zohar says, he says, and believe me, believe me, you, you don't want to go to Gehenna. You don't want to go to, you don't want to, you don't want to be in the Galgo. He says, Gehenna is much better than, than Gilgul. Why? Because Ge- Gehenna is a one-shot deal, basically. You go in, there's no suffolk what you're doing there. There's no suffolk what has to happen to you. The rectification begins, you get on the, it's like a car wash. You know, you go in, right, but the water is very hot. <laughs> you go in, right, and you come out. At some point in time, you come out and you go right to Ganeiden, and that's the end of it. He says, but Gilgulim is a whole different story. He says, he brings a mashal. He says, imagine a person who spends his entire life planting, not entire life, let's say years, planting wheat, grows the wheat, beautiful, beautiful wheat stalks, and all that, and says, I'm going to make good money from this wheat over here. And he packages it all up, and he goes to the next town. It turns out they were also having good wheat crops that year. And he shows up at the front gate, and the guy says, what are you doing here? He says, I came to sell my wheat. He says, you came here to sell your wheat? He said, take a look over here. Look, everybody's selling wheat over here. So, so what do you do at that point in time? To go back and reinvent yourself all over again. And who knows if by the time you get back home again, you remember what was, what was lacking from the marketplace to actually you know, to get out the next time. So the person comes into this world and, and doesn't necessarily do tikkun. They, they, they get the Shemaim, and Shemaim says, well, no, you can't come in, to go back again and start all over again and get it right. So a guy goes back and he goes, now what was I supposed to do again? <laughs> right? Because you come back in your body and you don't remember a thing. Like, what am I doing here? So they give you clues. Right? The first thing you have to do, the first thing you have to do is daven to Kodesh Baruch and say, show me what I'm here to rectify. <laughs> show me what I'm here to fix up. Right? But over here in chapter 20, Right, that he talks about, for example, he ends up by saying that uh, here's a whole discussion, but he says, exactly about you know, the whole concept of tikkun. He comes to Pasad, he says, he, he says, he brings the Pasad, the Kam, right? It's a very famous Pasad from Parshas Vyelech, right? Because Barchus is the Moshe Rabbeinu, you're going to die and lie down with your fathers. The Kam Ha'am, and the nation will get up and go after the gods of the, of the land. So the Gemara in Yuma says there are five psukim we're not clear about Pshat. And this is one of the psukim. Why? Because the Kam could go either on Moshe or the people. If it's going on Moshe Beinu, it doesn't make sense because why? It's because singular. Right? You will lie down and you will get up. It makes perfect sense. To do what? You're going to die. What do you mean get up on the head? Right? So it must be talking about the Jewish people. Let's talk about the Jewish people, should say, they're going to they're, they're get up, you know, talk in the plural. So there's, grammatically, you can, you can write the kama am, because am is like a singular plural noun type of a thing, whatever they call these things, right? But, but on a sort level, the reason also is they're both true, which is usually the case. They're both, there's a reason why the Torah is ambiguous. Because on a pshat level, you didn't like the way we, you know, talk about the Jewish people. 
On a sod level, he says it's talking about Moshe Rabbeinu. It's talking about Gilgulu. And this is one of the five psukim in the Gemara that there's no hachra. Perish. What does it mean there's no hachra? It says, Milus vakam, the word vakam, which means a get up. It can either go after what was just said or what's coming up after it. That's why it's ambiguous over here. The Shnem Emes, both of them are true, he says. He says, Ki hine, a seed Moshe at small of Zor be Gilgul, be Dar Basra. Because Moshe Bain is going to come back as a Gilgul. He's going to get up. You're going to lie down and get up again. When? Dor Achron, Dor Basra, Dor Mashiach. You're going to come back again as Mashiach, right? Both the Az Yukum. And then you get up. And that's the pshat. You're going to lie down with your fathers now, but you're going to get up again later on in the final generation as a Gilgul, in Mashiach. Gam as Badar Basra, and likewise, also in the final generation, because once you're bringing back Moshe for an encore, you might as well bring back the whole supporting cast at the same time, right? So he's Gavu called Dar Midbar. In the era of Rav, everybody comes back at the end. Everybody at the beginning comes back at the end. Right? And he goes on to say, does it come and that's what that's why I could also read and this nation will get up. He's not talking about getting up and going after the, the gods of the land. That's an a shot level. And a sod level means they'll also get up with you. You'll get up, they'll get up. You're all coming back for a reprise, take a curtain call at the end of history. That's what it says over here, right? The Inunhu. And this is what it means. He ain't ain't so therefore, there's no generation that Moshe Ben does not come back inside of. So the pasuk from Kohelis, the sun rises, the sun rises, the sun sets. The generations come and go. It's talking about that. Kid. Why? 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 Why do that? Why bring them back? What's the point? We, we, you know, there's not enough souls. I mean, I know we recycle plastic and other things like that, but souls, you know, you recycle those too. Little box by your drive, at the end, right? you know. Recycled souls. <laughs> okay. So he says, uh, he says, why? Kedela takenes darahu. To rectify that generation. You know, sometimes you learn things and you see a whole safer on an idea. You know, like Der Hashem, for example, is a whole safer of ideas. Not like one specific point in the safer that you know, literally knocks your socks off, so to speak. But the whole safer is a totality. It is your hashkafa and your approach to life. When you finish that safer, most that safer, he builds point by point by point. Sometimes you can read four words and it changes everything. Two words, one word. It depends what's being said. Usually not so much one word, right? Except Anochi, that did it. Anochi, you know, boom, changed everything. But here, right, four words, one sentence can change every, your whole historical context and everything you're thinking about and how you look at the world. So he says, coming back to the Taken, the, the last generation before Mashiach comes in his generation, Everybody's coming back to rectify. The heir of Rav is not going to rectify themselves. They're part of the rectification process. But the Dor Basra, the generation, the people who left with Moshe Rabbeinu, they have to rectify. They, they made a mistake. We're still paying for that mistake all these generations. They have to rectify. Moshe comes back to lead the rectification process. So you have to ask the question, rectify what? What are they coming back to rectify? That's a possibility. But we saw they already fixed that one. Because Moshe Bainu had all the Levium purged the camp. All the perpetrators were destroyed, basically were killed. And the rest of the people, the Tshuva, because they had the whole thing, the Mesot and all that. As Rashi points out, that every generation, every generation, there's a uh, there's not one punishment that does not have a piece of the Eagle Zahav that we're fixing it at the same time. And we went on from there. We went Vaita from there. If we had done nothing else after that Chet, Everything else would have fallen into place, but because it happened, things couldn't fall into place. But that was like that was was was, was a machaper for that the most for the most part. What was the straw that broke the camel's back? Miraglim. That was the whole thing. The rejection of Eretz Israel. Now, in every generation, it's it's documented. It's brought down. Every generation has its own nesoyim, its own test. In one generation, it might be kashrus. Because Borchu may make it that finding kosher food is difficult and expensive, and people have to make decisions that require mysterious nefesh. There are times Shabbos. when halakhas get fought, you know, Shabbos, right? Yeah. Major issue, right? It could be you know, the beginning, in America, that was one of the major issues in America going in the beginning. Do you work on Shabbos to survive or not? It was a big, a big turning point for a lot of families. 
historically. Tefillin, there are times when tefillin were, were unavailable. Esra, you know, every generation has its own Nesoyim, right? So what would you say is the Nesoyim today, right? If you look at that and you ask yourself, what's the biggest machlokis amongst the Jewish people today? It's not over tefillin. You didn't brought that on me. Hmm? Yeah, Internet, it's like the been an ongoing problem since the Jewish people first received Torah. There's no generation that has not been tested in the Muna. And our generation, even less so than other previous generations, the Holocaust, for example, you know, going back. Muna is, is like, it's like, it's like, it's like Kleenex versus tissue type of thing. It's, it's all, it's like, it's a generic title for all issues. Everything, Parnassah, it all comes down to Muna Niyah. That will be the key in the year, because that's what Eretz Israel actually is all about. It's Eretz Amun, it's Eretz B'tuchon. It's specifically designed to bring out B'tuchon and Amun. That's what it exists for. The whole point, which Baruch was saying, that I take care of this land. In Chutzlar, you can take care of yourself, because I work through a more Klobo de Kashkacha practice, where I'll make it look like you're taking care of yourself. In Eretz Israel, uh-uh. Here, it's from my hand to your mouth. And if you can't live in that reality, that's what the we're saying. But if you go back to the one specific Chet that Kla Yisrael did, and that changed everything. The Kosh Baruch said, that's the end of it. That's the last Nisoyen. We're not talking anymore about anything from this point onward. And even after they conquered the land later on, it, did, it wasn't a complete job because the whole thing with Rodlin still continued on. And Rav El Zaram says, he writes, he's right, anybody who rejects Eretz Yisrael does not long for it to live there, he says, is just perpetuating the Chet of the Rodlin. And then the Gra has even stronger language than that for the whole thing. So he says over here, he's saying a, a, a remarkable thing. It's not by coincidence. You know, someone's, I got into a discussion with somebody because I went to Chutzlar to speak and someone didn't like to hear the fact that we should be longing, yearning for that. And they had a whole time of it. It was all, you know, shitas. And he came, you know, after he, you know, wanted to argue the point. And I said to him, you know, I brought down this piece of the reason. And I said, you know, before you argue the point, just ask yourself the question, where are you coming from? But before you reject Israel, that why are you rejecting it? Because that's what you're doing, rejecting it. You're saying, no, Mashiach come, no, no, you know. Other post other Rosh other Mephoshim disagree. He's saying over here that the generation, the whole point of the final Gilgal of Kala Israel is the Metakin, the Maraglim. Because that's all that had to be fixed up. They were Makabal Torah, Nasa Venishma, and all these other things. They were always rectified all through history. That's, that's not the generation, the final generation that got fixed that up anyhow. Not with our weak, our weak spiritual capabilities in the end. But there's this is one thing, and it's just this blatant issue. And you stand back and you look like this, 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 wicked, this wicked thing, right? It's all, it was all about Eretz Israel. This one, the whole world is revolving. The entire universe today is revolving on this one tiny little piece of land. Everybody's attention is focused on it. All the emphasis is on it. All the, the finances are, are, are you know, revolving. You can't believe how much it, it's like so absurd. You think that Israel occupied two-thirds of the world, <laughs> the way the world reacts to it, as if we had all the oil and everything else in the end. It's completely, you stand back, it's completely absurd how they look at it. Even more absurd is the Jewish reaction to it in the end. And a person has to ask himself the question, right? Here I am at the end of history, and I'm being told by the Arizal, that we're here, this generation is the metake, it's the metake, the chet, of the marat, it's all that to be fixed up in the end, right? If, am I rejecting Eretz Israel? But the difference is going to be, and this is very important, this is very important, the same thing is true about getting a job and leaving coal and things like that, that the halacha is, brought from the Gemara in Brochas, and Bab Amun Aleph, is a klal, and the klal is, if you want to do a mitzvah, but you are prevented from doing the mitzvah, for reasons beyond your control, Shemayim will look at you as if you've done the mitzvah. So that means the following thing, right? The Pasuk says, Because Baruch, you will get up and you'll show mercy to the Jewish people because the appointed time will come. Why? The, the Iker points is the gra is that everybody has to yearn to be there. Whether you can physically be there or not depends upon all kinds of other circumstances. And Cheshbonu should have to work it between you and Kosh Baruch Hu. But the bottom, 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 bottom line is Kosh Baruch Hu knows what goes on a person's heart. The same way a person can say, it's not different, a person can say, I really want to get this guy more Sadaka. Hashem says, no, you don't. Because if you did, you would. Right? It's not because you, you, know, you know, you can fool yourself, but you can't fool me. So people say, oh, I love it. It's like Sadaka there the whole day. I really want to be there. Hashem says, if you really wanted to be there, you'd be there. Because there's no halakha holding you back. 